Hero Saint Delhi College would like to extend my warm welcome to you all to the Science Setu online talk organized in collaboration with National Institute of Immunology. Now I request our esteemed principal ma'am, Professor Sangeeta Pandita, to please give her words of wisdom. So once again, uh, welcome to our esteemed guest of the morning, Dr. Devet Sagalji and other guests so, who have been invited to this uh, um, morning's uh, program. Uh, this represents, in fact, if I remember very correctly, we had this program long time ago. So today is important because it represents the rejuvenation, revival and resurgence of that program. Uh, rightly, the uh, efforts put in by uh, coordinator Dr. Uh, Babita and in, uh, our uh, IQAC, the entire team of IQAC, including the coordinator, Professor Arif Sama, the efforts they have put into bringing back this program is really commendable. So I must congratulate you all. Because, you know, this is important for us uh, on many counts to have uh, a program like this where science is being taught from outside of the classroom. Because uh, uh, the way um, the position of science in society today demands such a kind of uh, intervention by, uh, I would read SETU as SETU because it serves us to convey a message. The acronym, it is, I know it's an acronym, but it helps us to convey a message that we have to build bridges. And building bridges is not an easy task. It's easier to build a wall, but it's far more difficult to build. Bring, uh, build a bridge and once you build a bridge I think we are uh, we have achieved a lot so we're going to bridge look at it as bridge building between uh, the scientific society as such the science uh, being done by great scientists as and the oh, uh, society part of the society that is young scientists budding scientists that are awaiting to be to have stimulation of that because you know every great advance in science has, has uh, issued from some a new audacity of imagination. So where does a young student get audacity of imagination? From the classroom he's busy in learning about the basics, but the audacity of imagination will only come from interaction with scientists who are actually working in the field. So it's a great initiative, I must say. Uh, and great opportunity for our young students to be a part of this uh, particular program. Then uh, I'm sure during the uh, program when you listen to such uh, talks which are uh, beyond your imaginations at the moment, uh, there is bound to be an uh, emotion uh, of uh, wonder. Each one of you is going to wonder how did that happen? You know, and that I think is the seed of great science. Every great science starts with the feeling of wonder. I wonder how it happened. So this is uh, the right uh, platform for interaction. I'm sure the topic that has been chosen is uh, extremely topical, the pandemic that we have been through and we are still uh, part of it now. And the immunity, these are the words that have been uh, banging us for the last two years. Uh, with this talk, you will have a better uh, understanding of the whole system human, human system, immune, immune system. The immune system has also been an inspiration for many uh, management circles because they say if you can actually achieve that kind of uh, efficiency and intelligence, every human cell has, has got the intelligence packed in it, fight. It doesn't have to wait for somebody, may I do this, may I do this? No, it is already packed and with full intelligence to uh, to deal with any kind of exigency, that any kind of um, invasion that happens. So this is something very, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of system that one needs to understand better. So what, what better opportunity than uh, this particular opportunity where you will get an occasion to understand not only the dynamics of the pandemic, but also what is human iman, immunity all about and how are we coping. So very well thought of topic, I must say, and we are all eager now to listen to our uh, guest of the morning. Uh, and again, I welcome uh, Dr. Saigal Jain to this particular uh, morning, uh, and we are really awaiting uh, to listen to 
Thank you so much and welcome to all of you, faculty, students as well as guests. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind words. Moving ahead, I would like to request Professor Mohammad Arif, IQAC coordinator, to share his thoughts. Thank you, Asana. Good morning and welcome to everyone in this uh, very knowledgeable and interesting talk from pandemic to immunity organized by the internal quality assurance cell IQAC in collaboration with the National Institute of Immunology. I want to say something IQAC. The prime task of the IQAC is to develop a system for conscious, consistent and catalytic improvement in the overall performance of the institutions. The work of the IQAC is the first step towards internalization and institutionalization of quality enhancement initiatives. Its success depends upon the sense of the belongingness and participation in all the constituent of the institutions. So it is clear that the vision of the IQAC is to ensure the quality culture for the higher education institution through institutionalizing and internalizing all the initiative taken with internal and external supports. So today's talk is also a part of quality enhancement initiatives. And I thought this is a very knowledgeable and interesting talk. So let us join enjoy the talk. Thank you very much, Asana. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to request Dr. Sarita Pase to please introduce the speaker. Uh, thank you so much, Asna, for giving me this opportunity to introduce the speaker who's going to talk on such an uh, pertinent topic, particularly in, in today's times. So thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, the speaker, Dr. Devender Segal, who's a senior scientist at the National Institute of Immunology. He heads the Molecular Immunology Laboratory at NII. Dr. Sehgal did his BSc from Hansraj College, Delhi University. Subsequently, he did his MSc from the School of Life Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Dr. Sehgal went on to do a PhD in Molecular Biology from School of Life Sciences, JNU. And then he moved to the National Institute of Allergy and, in, and Infectious Diseases at National Institute of Health, USA for his postdoctoral studies. At NIH, he worked on the molecular genetic analysis of B cell responses. After completing his postdoctoral studies, Dr. Sehgal joined NII as a faculty member. Dr. Sehgal has been working in the area of host pathogen interaction for the last three decades. And Dr. Sehgal's lab uses the human bacterial pathogen Streptococcus pneumoniae as a model for their studies. Dr. Sehgal has published his research in. Several of Dr. Segal's inventions have been granted international and national patents. Today, he will be speaking on the topic from pandemic to immunity. So we welcome you, sir, to speak on such an important topic. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the principal of Zakharuthan and colleagues at Zakharuthan College. Uh, it, it's a, indeed a pleasure to be uh, participating in this event and uh, would like to share some of my thoughts on uh, on this uh, topic which I have titled uh, uh, from pandemic to immunity and uh, uh, as as you all know the one of the reasons why we are having this online is because of the pandemic still floating around and uh, uh, many of the terms which were never you know crossed people's minds, for example, immunity is something that many of us have now gotten used to or hearing it. So what I will be uh, doing today is uh, giving you a sense of how the immune system works. And I will try and introduce you to some of the players that are involved in this process and uh, give you a little better, hopefully give you a better appreciation of how, how our system, the immune system, helps us fight various infections. So uh, I'll just uh, uh, introduce you to the institute uh, where I come from. This is the National Institute of Immunology. It's, it's an autonomous research institute under the Department of Biotechnology. Uh, it was established in 1981. 
and now we are into our 40th year of uh, existence. So uh, as a, uh, this is, NII is considered a premier center for you know, research in the area of modern biology, basic immunology and host pathogen interaction. So we do cutting edge research, not only in basic immunology, but also uh, applied immunology. So as a part of our uh, overall mandate, we also organize workshops, uh, seminars, and you know, training programs related to the field of immunology, uh, vaccine development, and related areas. And uh, we also serve as a kind of science sounding board or a think tank for trying to find, uh, you know, provide uh, quality healthcare solutions to uh, you know, major medical problems, especially in the area of immunology. So uh, for students, we do have various short-term programs, uh, two-month and six-month programs. And uh, I would encourage the students to, you know, uh, have a look at our website. These are, uh, of course, it, it's competitive and to get into the institute, but uh, we, there are provisions. So please uh, take this opportunity to, you know, also have a look and uh, spend. Uh, and if you make it, you will certainly have an opportunity to work uh, with, uh, you know, uh, labs and technologies which are cutting edge. So what I'm going to do is, we'll I'll just move on to the uh, the topic of uh, of uh, for the day. And uh, as you are all aware, of course, we are the the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 pandemic is still floating around. It may not be as bad as it was, but it's still there, okay? Now, but viruses are not the only organisms which cause diseases. Uh, here I have listed a, a, you know, a variety of different viruses which uh, are subcategorized into DNA and RNA viruses. And they cause a, a, you know, a variety of uh, you know, diseases. For, for example, you could have influenza, which is the common cold. You could have diarrhea, for example, rotavirus. Uh, rabies is also caused by a virus. So there are a variety of these, these uh, 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 viruses that can cause diseases. And of course, all of us are aware that uh, uh, there are a lot of bacterial diseases, bacterial pathogens, which uh, are responsible for a lot of morbidity and mortality within the country. Uh, for example, pneumonia is caused by one of, uh, uh, by streptococcus pneumoniae, for instance. You also have uh, uh, tuberculosis, which is called by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So uh, 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 now in addition to viruses and bacteria, again, uh, pathogens uh, can be, you know, from the group fungi, trypanosoma, uh, and also uh, various kinds of nematodes. Okay. So, so the immune system has to deal with a, you know, a plethora of different kind of, you know, uh, 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 pathogens. And they have, these pathogens have different kinds of, you know, lifestyles. And therefore, uh, our human system should be able to deal with them in, you know, their, their different devices, different methodologies, different cell types, you know, come into pictures. So I would not be going into details of, you know, uh, all of these because of constraint of time, but I'll try to, you know, bring in uh, the players uh, and and uh, the immune cell types, which you know can help to understand this thing process, and then we uh, hopefully will have a better appreciation of uh, the various steps that were taken to tackle the current ongoing pandemic. Okay, so uh, with regard to the immune system, it is kind of divided into two major parts, which is one is the innate immune system, which is Primarily, something which already exists, we put it, it has multiple components. For example, skin is a barrier which keeps the bacteria and other pathogens, uh, you know, away from your immune system. Okay, you could also have, you know, various mechanisms by which, for example, you could have uh, 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 components within human tear which would kill bacteria, for instance. Okay, so uh, it, uh, innate meaning it is it is already there in place. But uh, there is also an entire uh, system which comprises of, you know, adaptive immune system, which is you, the immune system adapts in response to the in infection. So it, it, it comes into, it comes alive after the infection kicks in. And uh, there are two major uh, cell types uh, which are responsible for this. So these are referred to as T cells, also called T lymphocytes and B cells, okay? Uh, please uh, remember that the immune system is uh, quite a complex in interwoven uh, network of various 
you know, a multiple cell types and multiple soluble factors such as cytokines that are being released by these various cell types. So there is active cooperation and coordination between these cell types, uh, uh, you know, this, the, which is which makes the immune response possible. So uh, as, as a broad categorization, what uh, what has been seen is that if if a uh, let's say a bacteria is extracellular, which means it can replicate outside human cells. It's called extracellular bacteria. You can also have bacteria which are intracellular. For example, mycobacterium tuberculosis goes into a certain cell type called macrophages and it can reside in, in there. And then it can, you know, cause its, you know, the various disease and its manifestations. So broadly, what has been seen is that the cells, the, the bacteria or pathogens which are extracellular, the uh, main form of protection that the host brings about is basically, you know, antibody mediated. However, the, the cells which are within, within, which reside within host cells, uh, I was giving an example of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, which, which resides in macrophages. The pr protection is tilted towards, you know, uh, T cell based, uh, also referred to as cell mediated immunity. So, uh, for uh, for for today's purposes, uh, I would be spending most of the time to, uh, trying to help you understand how antibodies uh, help fight infections. So, uh, I, I, this is just to give you. Uh, I have picked up two uh, pathogens. One is about extracellular bacteria, which is Streptococcus pneumoniae. And uh, this is an airborne infection. Uh, uh, so once it is taken up, the back, back infected uh, air droplets are taken up by a healthy individual. The the back bacteria goes and you know uh, get parts itself in the nasopharynx, and it can stay there for you know extended periods of time. You may not have any. It, it will be just asymptomatic colonization. You have the pathogen, but there is no disease manifestation. But under circumstances which are not well understood, uh, one could also have, you know, a condition where the person is malnourished. One, one could also have a situation where somebody got infected with the virus and the immune system, you know, kind of became a little weak. And this is the time where the, the colonized bacteria is going to, you know, start uh, taking the, uh, making use of the opportunity and then invading the immune system to go into, for example, lungs to call pneumonia or get into the blood, blood system. Uh, to cause, uh, you know, bacteria, bacteremia, or it can even go to the, the brain-related uh, setup, uh, causing meningitis. Okay, so this is this is a bacteria side of this, and and as an example, uh, keeping in mind the, the current pandemic, we of course I am sure all of you are aware that this is caused by a, a you know a virus, and uh, if you look at the right hand side of the uh, picture you have uh, a, a, a proteins s protein which is uh, which is uh, uh, the spike protein uh, and this is the one which uh, is responsible for binding to the host uh, host cells and the protein in the host cell is uh, the time two okay so uh, ace2 okay so that's that's the initial contact but again I, there is, if you go back and look at this picture a little closely there are uh, also host factors for example there is a transmembrane uh, uh, protease uh, which is responsible for you know proteolytically digesting uh, the s1 protease uh, protein uh, into two uh, components and these are uh, are required for for the uh, entry into the host cells. Okay, so uh, this is the, the as as uh, you may be aware that the, the virus is actually going to be replicating within the host cells. Okay, so when when the virus is released into from the host cells, and that is the time you you where which where these these cells uh, the viruses virus viral particles can be acted upon by the immune system. Okay, there are also other aspects of it. Uh, for example, when a host cell is infected with the virus, there is, uh, uh, you know, a, a secretion of what are called interferons, gamma interferon and alpha interferon. 
Uh, so uh, as, as I was, <coughs> excuse me, as I was mentioning, it, it's it's not a one component thing which does everything. The, the variety of uh, various uh, aspects of the immune system kick in to to fend fend a, a, a pathogen. Okay, so uh, it, just to give you an overview of the talk, I'll be just de de describing one aspect of the immune system. And uh, the reason I picked up uh, antibodies is that you've heard about it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure many of you have been vaccinated and, you know, you have, must have seen in articles uh, in, uh, in, in newspapers and, you know, magazines and perhaps, uh, you know, electronic media as well. Uh, how, how the role of these antibodies so we'll we'll in general talk about what these antibodies are all about and how how these antibodies are generated uh, where are they generated and how do the antibodies help in fighting the infection okay and uh, uh, given the pandemic we'll have a sh very short discussion about the vaccine and how long-term protection is achieved and a little bit about you know uh, uh, herd immunity uh, we can have we'll have a discussion following this uh, uh, aspects, and then uh, I have also included a couple of questions that we can you know see if we, we, we learned anything out of this. Okay, so that's that's how it is. So let's let's start by looking at the structure of antibody molecule. So this uh, is actually has uh, two kinds of uh, proteins. It's a heterodimer. Uh, which means uh, this one uh, up here is a, is a heavy chain because, and then you have a smaller light chain. Uh, the light chain is up up here. So uh, the, the heavy and light is just based on the size. The big the bigger size one is the heavy chain and then they are, there is light chain. And these molecules, uh, the heavy chain, there are two heavy chains in a given IgG molecule. We'll come to that in a little bit. And and uh, there are two light chains which are you know both of these are put together uh, by by means of you know inter, intra chain and interchain uh, disulfide bonds. Okay, so these are commonly attached, and uh, it is is a proportion of the molecule which is called antigen binding pockets, which is uh, actually uh, brought together by the variable region. Okay, I will come to what is variable region. This is the one. Which is going to be binding the antigen. Okay, so for a given IgG molecule, there are two binding sites. Okay, the, 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 the both of the both these sites are identical, and so uh, so essentially, and uh, uh, if you look at the uh, yeah, what you see in yellow, this is the heavy chain. Uh, okay, and uh, in in blue, this is the other heavy chain. Both of them are identical, although the colors have been you know. The, they have been given different colors, but they are actually identical to each other. So some of the functions are to do with the antigen binding, which is which is recognizing the pathogen. And other portions have to do with other kinds of functions. And we'll dwell on this, uh, this aspect a little bit. OK, so uh, the antibody molecule is has a binding site, which is going to be recognizing, you know, uh, motifs present on the on the pathogen. Okay, so that's the idea here. Now, uh, antibodies can be of you know variety of kinds, and they have been given different different names. What we just were looking at previously was this IgG molecule. We have a antigen binding site up here, and the second antigen binding site up here. Overall, as you will see, they all have a kind of a similar structure. Uh, the sizes could vary a little bit. They have been given different names, and but each of these antibody types has a as, as a slightly different function. Okay, we'll come to come to that a little bit. Okay, and some of these uh, 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 molecules, for example, a, uh, a IgM version, which is you know secreted, uh, is 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 uh, a pentamer, which means that it has it is ten. Uh, as we try and understand how 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 this will make a difference in terms of the uh, outcome, you also have another version which is IG, IgA, which is a dimeric version. Now, why do we have so many different isotypes, or how many di di these different? Each of them have a different function. Okay, for example, you could have uh, you know a infection in your throat. As far as immunology is concerned, uh, the throat is considered outside the immune system okay or physically which is within within the, the gut is going to be out considered outside the immune system so the antibodies have to be released from the blood for example and you know 
uh, sent out to the, the the throat or the nasopharynx, for example. Okay, so this is you have an antibody which is called IgA, which is going to be secreted and released into the surfaces so that it can, uh, you know, the mucosal surfaces as they are referred to, and they can fight the infection. Okay, so similarly, if, if you you have uh, some isotypes which are going to be responsible for you know allergic reactions, for example. There are others which uh, can help to trans uh, isotypes which will which can be transferred from the mother to the child. Okay, so each isotype or this uh, antibody type has it has unique functions. So <clears throat> that's the that's the reason we have you know a variety of these that are there. Now, uh, once you, a, a, a person or an individual has been infected, okay, you you will make a, a immune response, and as I said, you can make responses, T cell responses as well as B cell responses. So, and, and as I said, that for for today's purposes, we will be focusing primarily on the B cell responses, and uh, the, you would. In, induce antibodies. Uh, uh, antibodies will be generated. So the question, and and we know that antibodies help in fighting the infection. The question now is how 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 does one uh, how do the antibodies fight the infection? Okay, so let's let's think about this. There are multiple aspects to this. Uh, uh, let's think about this. You up gray uh, in gray. You have uh, a host cell. And this is a bacteria which is releasing a toxin, which is this yellow uh, red. And this toxin binds to a receptor on the host cell and causes the disease. Okay. Now, uh, so once it, it, it can cause the disease. Now, if you have an antibody which binds to this toxin in a manner that the, the toxin is no longer able to bind to the host cell, then the toxin is not going to make any impact because you have neutralized the toxin. Okay. So this 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 aspect is called neutralization. The, the the toxin from the bacteria, for example, has has been rendered ineffective because it, the toxin can no longer bind the receptor and therefore it cannot impact the uh, the the host cell. Okay, so the, the the toxin has been neutralized. This is one way by by which the virus is uh, uh, the toxin is has been rendered ineffective. Now let's go to the lower part of this, this uh, panel. Uh, what what is seen here is a virus, and this virus has a uh, has a, has a you know a, let's say a, a, a protein on the surface in red, and it is binding to a receptor present on the host cell in gray. Okay, now this uh, because of this binding, the virus is in turn taken up, and the the genetic material could be RNA, could be DNA. Is, is released and then the virus replicates within the host cell. Now, however, if you have antibodies against this, you know, the, the key uh, the protein on the virus, then the virus is not able to bind to the receptor anymore. So again, the, this virus has been, you know, neutralized or rendered ineffective, okay? That's how, you know, the, the vaccines that we have recently got would work, okay? so. So now that was with regard to viruses and toxins. Now, whether any of these work for the bacteria, for example. Okay, so up here we have a analogous situation where we are talking about you know a, a, a bacteria which is you know uh, colonized a certain cell surface, for example, and you have receptors present on the host cell which recognize you know a bacterial. Uh, factors, uh, surface proteins, for example, and this is then, you know, internalized within the host cell, for example, in macrophages. And uh, uh, so, so uh, how can you prevent the bacteria from getting in? Now, let's think about the right-hand side panel on the right-hand side, wherein you have the virus and these, these you have antibodies which have, which are binding to this, you know, the, 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 uh, the ba bacterial protein. And as a result, now the bacteria is not able to, you know, bind to the host cell. Okay, so this this uh, process is uh, called. Uh, uh, so you, uh, you have you have again disrupted the interaction of the bacteria with the host proteins the receptors, and thereby you are, you know, uh, um, not allowing this bacteria to be taken up. Okay, so uh, this is a process that can be. <coughs> uh, so the antibodies can help in some other way as well. Okay, so now again, let's go back and have a look at the bacteria. 
you have uh, you know antibodies which can bind to this virus in uh, a certain category of uh, immune cell types which is called macrophages these are phag phagocytes phagocytes meaning they can take up you know particulate matter like bacteria they can internalize it and they can then kill kill the bacteria okay so how do the antibodies help in this process the antibodies can bind to what is referred to uh, uh, there is so you have the antibody molecule there are two different binding sites you have what is called a constant region i had, i didn't bring it up in, uh, in uh, earlier in the talk there is a, the, so you have a receptor which binds to the constant region of the antibody and these are then again taken up and uh, if if uh, they, they, uh, these these uh, uh, food, uh, bacteria coated with the antigen can be taken up and then they can be destroyed within the host cells so the the, the antibodies can uh, you know help to recognize the pathogen and bring the pathogen to 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 the the re relevant cell types for them to be you know destroyed okay in this particular instance we are talking about macrophages okay uh, you, you also have some other comp uh, components which can facilitate this uptake of the bacteria by something called uh, certain proteins which are called uh, complement proteins which can then be taken up uh, uh, which can also facilitate the uptake uh, because of the presence of receptor. So what we are seeing here is a complement receptor, FC3B, and you have a corresponding uh, receptor, C, uh, complement receptor 1 on macrophages, which can also help to take up the bacteria and then they can be destroyed. So this is how, how the, the, the antibodies are helping to not only, for, uh, we, we, we had examples for the virus, we have examples of the, the bacteria, and so these 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 can then you know uh, again be take, taken up and destroyed so that is how typically these if these uh, antibodies are going to be uh, <coughs> useful in this sense now uh, where, where are the various immune cell types produced in adult uh, human adults for example and uh, so this these these uh, we we make the various cell types including the b cells in the bone marrow okay so uh, within the bones are critical and uh, if you uh, are aware of the structure you have a certain hollow portion and that is where all the blood uh, uh, various immune cell types are produced uh, i would uh, some of these i'm sure you have heard or read about previously uh, b cells and t cells perhaps you are familiar if there are other cell types like nk cells natural killer cells you have dendritic cells neutrophils is another kind of uh, phagocytic cells and there are you know macrophages and monocytes we have rbcs that you have so all the various cell types are actually produced in in in, in the bone marrow okay and uh, as i mentioned uh, the b, b cell uh, development and maturation happens also also happens in the bone marrow now uh, i would uh, not go into great detail but just to you know give you a sense that uh, B, B, uh, the B cells are divided into two different categories, B1 cells and B2 cells. And there are a variety of different stages that occur. Uh, you know, 4 B cell, 3 B cell, immature B cells. We'll not go into the details, but then uh, B cells are not just B cells. There are variety of, you know, uh, 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 subsets or subpopulations as they are called. For example, B1 cells is uh, up here. You also have follicular B cells and marginal B cells. The most important part to remember is that th 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 there are more specialized versions of B cells, which which are uh, going to be relevant for uh, you know various uh, in, in fighting various uh, uh, pathogens. Okay, so uh, now while the B cells are being produced in the bone marrow, the uh, the antibody molecule is actually present on on the B cells after the B cells have seen the pathogen or antigen they get activated they, they they can then start you know they go through a differentiation process we will come to that in a bit so during b cell development there are also you know changes that are taking place in the genes that encode the immunoglobulin receptors okay i, I was talking about the igg receptor where you have a heavy chain and you have a light chain and uh, uh, so bo both of these are encoded by on different chromosomes okay now uh, for, I'm sure some of you are aware of the uh, structure of a eukaryotic gene, but uh, the immunoglobulin genes or the antibody genes are perhaps the most complex genes that are known to mankind. 
uh, for most most of the cases, uh, uh, you would find that the size of a pro, uh, of a gene is you know a couple of kilobases. Unlike uh, a typical eukaryotic gene, this is uh, what you have shown here are the various gene segments present in the immunoglobulin heavy chain locus. Okay, each of these boxes that you see is is a part of the gene, and the overall size. This uh, rolls over to the second slide is. 2900 kb kilobases so this is a huge huge locus okay uh, the size of bacteria this can be 2k 2 megabases this is 3 megabases one gene is bigger than the size of the uh, a, a, a standard bacterial genome okay so this is the heavy chain lo uh, lo the gene that votes for the heavy chain and this is uh, uh, the gene uh, uh, the molecular anatomy of of the gene which votes for the uh, one of the light chains. This is the kappa locus, okay, and this one goes to 3.3 megabases. So this is these are huge, complex uh, loci, as as you were, uh, that are present, and the regulation of these are quite complex, okay. So, but this is uh, the reason I brought this up was to you know help you understand that these these are complex processes. And uh, the, uh, it may appear very trivial, but it may not may not be so straightforward. Okay. Now, this complex uh, the the way the gene is organized that does not give you a protein product. There is a process called somatic VDJ recombination process. Okay. The the the, the, in, in the various as you will see, there are different colors have been given. So you have various gene segments present within this loci. Uh, there is something called a, a variable, variable region, v, v gene, D gene, and J genes. These are gene segments. We will not go into the details, but they have to be recombined at the somatic level for them to make the functional antibody molecule. Okay, so this process is called VDJ recombination process, and we would generate, you know. Uh, 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 this is a, 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 a Shushumiro Tonigawa actually got a Nobel Prize for finding out uh, the somatic recombination process. Now, uh, remember that in, in, in within a, a human bo body, you have you know billions of B cells. Each B cell has a unique antibody molecule or immunoglobulin on its surface. Each of them is different. Okay, so you have billions of different kind of you know immunoglob antibody molecules. And these are generated by you know various processes. Uh, I would not go into the details, but there are uh, you know sequences uh, present in the gene which are recognized by various proteins, uh, which help in this somatic recombination process. Okay, there is something called recombination signal sequence, which is important for this process. And there are also proteins which are you know which bring about the somatic recombination process uh, i'll just uh, mention about two of them which is the rag1 and rag2 proteins recombination activating gene 1 and 2 these are key proteins responsible for this process to take place so overall the net result of this is that there are a variety of mechanisms uh, within within the uh, uh, which are responsible for generating this huge you know antibody uh, a repertoire as it is called so so that you have you know all kinds of combinations that are possible with your immune system should cater to anything and everything that can that it can encounter so therefore the the, the pre-immune repertoire meaning that the repertoire that is present even when the host has not seen the the pathogen or antigen is is huge okay now, how, how does the antibody recognize the pathogen? Okay, so uh, let, let's think about this as a bacterial surface or, or a surface of a virus. And you have, you know, uh, uh, portions of which, which is referred to as epitope, which is recognized by this antibody molecule. Okay, so if the epitope density is low, only one of these, uh, you know, uh, antigen binding site is going to be occupied. If the density of the epitopes are higher, you can bind you know, much in, in a much stronger manner. And as I was mentioning, the IgM is, is a pentameric molecule and it can bind 10 different epitopes. So obviously it can bind it, bind it pretty strong. Okay. Now, uh, how, how does one know whether the, you know, uh, protein is, 
uh, if, you know, the antibody is binding to, a, 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 you know, a protein, for example, there are various techniques. One of them is called ELISA, for example. Uh, and if uh, one can also find uh, there are, you know, one can do simple experiments wherein, let's say, you have a protein to which the, the, the uh, antibody is binding. And if you heat the protein and you, you could possibly lose the binding, uh, which was going to tell you that the, the, the epitope, the, which is being recognized, is actually not contiguous, not, you know, in, in a straight line. In, in, on, in the linear sequence okay so there are ways by which one can figure out whether the the epitope is you know linear or it is conformational meaning if you hate it for example the conformation of the protein is going to get messed up and therefore the antibody is no longer able to bind it okay now uh, uh, within the body where does where does the immune uh, where does the immune response occurs Okay, so these uh, and uh, the immune response takes place in what are called secondary lymphoid organs. One of them is spleen, okay, which is basically present in the abdominal cavity. You could also have another uh, one which is called the lymph nodes. Okay, so what these small structures that you are saying, these are induced in response to the infection, or or you know if you have introduced a uh, you know an entity which can be called antigen. Okay, so this is just to give you a cross-sectional view. The, under the microscope, they would look like these. You have various structures that are there. These are referred to as germinal, germinal centers. And there, that is where all the immune response is actually taking place. Okay, and because T and B cells would migrate into these structures, this is an example of a lymph node, which is also a secondary lymph node organ. Okay, now what, what is going on uh, in the last... <coughs> Uh, 10 15 minutes let me just you know try to bring in some of the other players that are involved as i was mentioning if, if, with those small structures that we are seeing within the screen these are referred to as general center and here what has been seen uh, what what has been seen is that uh, antigen specific t and b cells would come together and they would participate in this general center reaction there you know uh, in other cell types like so, for example, FDCs, follicular dendritic cells, T cells, and B cells are coordinating and cooperating with with each other to, you know, generate, you know, uh, two kinds of cells. One is what are referred to as the memory B cells, and you also generate what are called plasma cells. So, the antibody is actually secreted by the plasma cell, not the B cells. Okay, and you also have memory B cells, which basically means that these are cells they're going to remember what was the infection what was the pathogen that the body encountered some time back so they, this is the memory like we remember our past uh, similarly this is an immunological memory equivalent which which remembers what happens okay and uh, we'll come to that uh, because it's going to be useful with regard to the vaccines that we have been taking in uh, in our childhood and also more recently okay so important things to remember is that there is a variety of things which happen within the germinal centers you will you are going to generate plasma cells which release the antibody you are also going to generate memory B cells which are responsible for long term protection okay now let's get, let's get back to the sars cov2 uh, vaccine this uh, 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 this is the uh, spike protein i am sure you have heard about the spike protein and again this is a detailed analysis within the spike protein you have something called uh, the receptor binding domain, which is, uh, you know, a, a specific part which is actually responsible for binding of the virus to the host protein. Okay, the host protein, as I was mentioning, is present in all uh, all cell types. And this is the ACE2 uh, protein. And it, this is the, you know, RBD, receptor binding domain, it, the, this portion of this spike protein. On the surface of the virus, this exists as a homer uh, trimer. Mm -hmm. And this is how the binding takes place at the molecular level. People have solved this atomic structure. These are details that are present. So now think about this. If you, when you are getting a vaccine, you're going to be inducing antibodies against this, uh, uh, against the, the spike protein. And some of these antibodies can actually recognize structures up here, okay, in this portion. This is a expanded version. So these are interactions that are taking place at the atomic level, okay? And so if you have an antibody molecule which comes in here 
and now does prevents the virus from binding to the host cell then you are going to be you know preventing the spread and over a period of time you will clear the infection so that is how the vaccines would work okay now of course we started with the wuhan strain and over a period of time we had the beta beta variant and now we are were struggling with the the omicron variant so there are lots of variants that have come so you may have generated antibodies which neutralize the virus but now what has happened is the virus itself has changed and the the uh, the antibodies which were originally disrupting the interaction of the rbd uh, the spike protein with the host receptor are it, it does they, they don't they are missing there and therefore they cannot you know they are not neutralizing anymore you could have also have other mutations that can take place uh, in 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 the uh, the spike protein such that it binds to the host cell even better okay now they are binding even uh, the binding the, the affinity of the spike protein to the host receptor is actually higher and therefore they can infect you know a, a more efficiently okay so these are aspects which which are important not only can you uh, uh, the, the the variants can escape the the immune uh, you can have a immune escape uh, uh, happening at the same time you could also have situations where the bind the affinity of the uh, spike protein of a certain variant of sars cov2 to the host receptor is actually enhanced because of the mutation so these are things that one has to think about now how do you try and disrupt this interactions okay of course one way is that when you are you you, you can have uh, uh you know antibodies which can uh, which which can disrupt the uh, the interaction of the ace ace receptor with the virus okay the one is you actually made antibodies in the lab and you put the antibodies in the person so these are therapeutic antibodies you can also have vaccine elicited antibodies that is what all of us are basically doing so this interactions if you basically have to prevent the virus from going in into the host cell okay so that's that's the whole idea about about the the the, the vaccine now uh, <coughs> uh, there we have you know the vaccine sars cov two vaccines are coming in variety of formats one of them is this inactivated whole uh, virus okay which basically you grow the virus and you in, inactivate it add a an adjuvant and that is uh, so the the example in india for this is the covaxin you can also have you know uh, uh, make what are nano formulations of the spike protein so that the spike protein is you know uh, displayed on these nano particles which can can uh, be a useful format uh, the covid shield is a adenovirus based virus so it's it's basically a chimpanzee virus where the the it it has been engineered in a manner that it can express the spike the sars cov2 spike protein on its surface so uh, those of you uh, who have taken covid shield this is what how the the, the overall uh, format looks like and of course we have uh, in pfizer for example where you this uh, you have mrna of the spike protein which has been you know formulated in, in a lipid uh, layer and this is what is given as a part of the the immunization and once this the uh, the mrna is you know this this fuses with the host cell the mrna is released into the host cell then it makes the put the spike protein which then of course serves as the the immunogen okay so this these are the various one how 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 does it work okay this i think the last slide or one or two more slides to go okay so essentially what is happening is let's go back and try and understand why do we need booster shots and how does it work so what we are seeing here is we are looking at time in, on on the x axis uh, this is over you know over weeks and months and on the y axis you have the magnitude or of, of the antibody responses okay so as as with uh, your initial exposure of first shot was given let's say times time zero and so your antibody uh, concentrations in the blood for example or titers as they are termed keeps going up okay it's it's going up what is happening is you have you had a b cell which is recognizing the pathogen or the antigen and this gets activated you also un, you know make more copies of the same you, so there is some kind of expansion that happens at some point in time this activated b cell will differentiate into a plasma cell which is the one which is going to be releasing the 
the antibodies okay so over a period of time the, the antibody titers keep dropping but then you are going to generate what is called a long lived plasma cell which basically would migrate into the bone marrow and these guys will be releasing antibodies at a certain level okay you are also going to be generating memory b cells okay now think about this you either had a second shot or you had a second bout of infection now at this point in time you have memory b cells which remember that this is the pathogen we had seen so this time around they are going to, they, the response is very rapid it's it's the, you you have much higher titers of the antibody and you you your the time it took uh, let's say it was at 10 weeks now it's going to take only 5 weeks for you to respond to this because your body remembers you have memory b cells against the the virus for example and you will make much higher amounts of this uh, antibodies and therefore you, you you can stay you know uh, protected and the concentrations would stay at a higher level okay so this is what happens after you have taken a second shot of 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 the viral vaccine or you were exposed a second time okay so that's fundamentally the principle and uh, you typically for all commercially available vaccines you typically take three shots okay so so now now, now we have uh, in, uh, in in the next uh, couple of minutes let's this is meant to help you think through and hopefully we'll have some discussion around this uh, aspect uh, we had delta variant which was the dominant one during the second wave now we have omicron which is you know the dominant one uh, question here is that is omicron worse than delta or the other way around okay so we'll we'll just open this up for discussion uh, yeah, so it, it, it would be uh, and why why we think this is better or that is worse i mean remember the pandemic is still on uh, you one can still get infected and have covid-19 so uh, this is to look at uh, how whether uh, we we have a little bit better appreciation for you know uh, the immunological principles that are important and how we are going to be viewing the pandemic from an immunologist uh, point of view okay so the, we will we'll come to this discussion a little bit so um, uh, so that that's the discussion we'll uh, I have a couple of questions so i think i'm done with the presentation and uh, uh, thank, uh, so let let's let's see if we could understand what we have okay so uh, uh, one could, uh, you know, either you can answer it in the chat box, or if you think you would like to respond, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay. Uh, so shall I read it out for you? And how is it going to be a good way to deal with it? Uh, so the question, the, the first question to the, the the audience and especially the students is that in adults, B cells are produced in. There are four options that are there. So where are B cells produced within the host cell? Sir, in bone marrow. What is what is that? Sir, one answer is bone marrow, chavi. Okay, bone marrow. Any other difference of opinion? So, so bone marrow is the correct answer. We'll go to the next one. <laughs> Please answer. We'll be giving certificates to all the students who will be uh, giving right answer and prompt answers. Okay, yeah, yeah, please. This is meant to help uh, uh, understand things a little bit better. Okay, the, the, the number two is that antibodies are produced by, there are four options up here, plasma cells, T cells, B cells, and macrophages. B Pardon cells. Me? B cells. Anybody else? B cells, B cell is not the correct answer. So there is one student saying uh, Saurav Kumar A. Option A, A. Yeah, yeah, option A, plasma cells. Okay, B cells are, are on seeing the antigen, they would uh, differentiate into memory B cells or plasma cells. And it is the plasma cells which produce the antibodies, not the B cells. Okay, so uh, uh, plasma cells is plasma cell is the right answer for this question. Okay, next question. Uh, we are trying. Uh, the, where does the immune response take place? Okay, within the within the hu human beings. Okay, kidney, liver, spleen, muscle. Where does the immune response take place? So one answer is spleen. 
Chavi is saying spleen. Anubhuti is saying liver. Anyone else? Yeah, the, the correct answer is spleen. It's a secondary lymphoid organ. And that's where the actual immune response takes place, independent of where the infection happened. You can have a cut in your body and, and on the skin. The pathogen would find its way through the lymphatic system and goes to secondary lymphoid organs like, you know, lymph nodes or spleen. There is lymph node is not an example, but that is also another site where it can happen. OK. Next question. What what is the receptor for the SARS-CoV-2 virus on human cells? You have to name the receptor. <laughs> so there are three questions also in the chat box that we can take after the quiz. All right, perfect. More than happy. Yeah. So so please answer who, this question, students. Yeah. What is the receptor? I mean, what does on the virus we have spike protein? What does the virus the spike protein bind to on the host cells what is the name of the receptor okay uh, this is uh, i have put up where uh, the answer is there you have to look it up what does the virus bind to on the host receptor Answer is there in the screen. Can you can you just try to look at the early events, or do you, would you like me to answer that? Okay, so so the answer to this is ACE2 up here, angiotensin converting enzyme two. Okay, that's the receptor present on this, and this this receptor is present on all 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 human cells. Okay, so that's the reason the virus is able to get you know effective so dramatically. For example, if there was hepatitis uh, virus, it, it is basically uh, the receptor is present more or less exclusively in the liver. So the virus can only infect liver cells. The other other parts of the body are more or less you know unaffected directly. Okay. So it, but in in this instance, the ACE2 receptor is all over the place. Okay. So anything and everything can be. Okay. Now, now uh, this is the uh, last question. Uh, so obviously, uh, I'm sure all of you would, would have already taken two shots of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. Okay, so obviously we know it is useful. Can somebody explain? Okay, so how I, I just explained the principle of it. I would like you to see if you can, you know, get you got something out of it. So how how does the booster shot help? I mean, the immunology of it. So somebody may have to actually, uh, I mean, if you can type it, good. If you want to speak up, I'm happy happy to look that up also. <coughs> how, how, how does having booster shots help? Let's, let's try to come back and have a look at this. We are saying, OK, when you are saying first exposure, that is the first shot that was given. You're going to make, and you know, you're going to make. Uh, so there is one answer in the chat box saying provides renewed memory. Yeah. So so what what is happening is that that's that's pretty, uh, pretty much what it is. Uh, you, when you have when when a person is exposed for the first time, the person is going to start making, you know, uh, um, plasma cells. Of course, they're going to make antibodies. You'll also make memory B cells. And that is what you know. That is the way the information is stored in the immune system. That we have seen the host has seen this infection previously. So when you have a second exposure, or you are get, so basically the the vaccine is mimicking the pathogen. It is making the host system believe that we have an infection. In reality, the the vaccine doesn't cause the disease. So you want to you know the immune system will say, oh, baba, aa gaya. You know, infection aa gaya george amount caro response so the, the memory cells are going to get activated very quickly and they are going to make a huge amount of you know uh, uh, response and you'll have a much higher magnitude of antibodies which which is generated and you're going to generate memory response again so remember you say one of the issues that we are facing with the sars cov2 is apne shot diya wo tha 6 mahine ke baad vaccine ka asar khatam ho gaya so you need to boost it you have to increase the memory pool 
so that the system can produce antibodies when when it is required okay so we, uh, 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 we can go back to the, the questions in the chat box and then we have a small discussion after this yeah uh, can somebody read out the questions in the chat box please sir i will yeah please thank you uh, won't taking repeated booster shots increase the concentration of pathogen in the body and make it susceptible to the disease instead of protecting okay very, uh, very interesting question uh, the see what happens is that re remember i was showing you there are various formats of the of the uh, the vaccine that are being given okay each of them have their own plus minus points okay for example when we are saying inactivated whole virus this is a re uh, you actually grew in uh, you know in, in laboratory conditions the virus in large numbers and then you are going to inactivate it by chemical chemical means most of the time and what if what if you know a very small fraction one millionth uh, of a, uh, you know of a percent was not inactivated okay that virus if when you are giving the vi vaccine you might actually get infected with the with the virus because there is a very you know a couple of particles are actually infectious you, the inactivation was not complete okay so you when you are going to multiple shots you might actually end up getting the virus because the the vaccine preparation is not good okay in reality there are lots of checks and balances this is a very very rare event okay but theoretically you cannot rule it out some of the other formats don't have this kind of an issue for example when you are looking at the mrna based vaccine on the right hand side there is no virus per se we are just taking a we, uh, the the s the there is a mrna which codes for the uh, for the spike protein okay and you when you give this 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 uh, by lipid layer you know kind of fuses with the host cell and the mrna is released within the cell and you have the machinery for translating this mrna into a protein which is going to serve as the vaccine so there is no virus per se the only one is this initial one where you actually inactivated the virus the others you can take multiple shots it, it should not be in in an issue there are you know i mean for example the mrna one has a, the issue is that you have to have a cold chain running meaning you have to have something like minus 20 or minus 70 degree transportation to uh, from the manufacturer to the actual shot but this is very difficult to attain in our kind of country okay we, we, i mean this uh, making sure that it is made in some conditions till the person is given a shot so this is this is very hard to achieve okay so in in, in that sense if if you the in, inactivation process is perfect you 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 there is there is no you know danger of getting the infection per se okay but as i said theoretically the, the of the four formats we are talking about the inactivated whole virus is the one which has a little bit higher chance than the other but again as i said there are quality control processes in place which will make sure ki aisa nahi hota hai okay but uh, yeah, i'm just saying in a, from a theoretical standpoint we can go to the next question so the next question is why is only coronavirus mutating currently and not other viruses these are the variants of same virus as we know so why are we still not immune to disease okay so see one of the challenges that we have is that the virus is a moving target okay so now typically uh, this is a you know a, a plus strand single plus single stranded rna virus so the 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 enzymes that are responsible for replicating you know for the replication of the viruses have you know they make mistakes okay so they have poor fidelity meaning when you uh, have to copy you know rna to another one they make mistakes okay so you are actually generating variants of the virus all the time okay so you may uh, uh, the issue that comes up is that this is a moving target you keep making new variants and some variants for example omicron uh, binds to the host uh, with higher affinity the host receptor with higher affinity okay and obviously this is this will help the the propagation of virus becomes faster so if you have few cells few few viral particles they are immediately going to bind to the host cell they will go into the host cell and make more copies of it okay so uh, 
over and now the thing to remember is that let's say we have a population of people who have not been vaccinated okay so they may get infected and if it, you will make more variants provided you are giving them an opportunity to make more variants if for example everybody on earth is in uh, properly vaccinated the virus doesn't have a place to replicate it cannot replicate on a desk or it or it needs cells human cells for the replication to take place okay so if all of us are immune all of us have had our two three shots then the virus doesn't have a vessel in which it can you know replicate and make this variants okay so in that sense uh, you know once we achieve that kind of a level of uh, uh, immunization then then uh, we are basically out of it for the most part it it this will show up as you know the way we have common cold zukam ho jata hai will have harder and harder time to you know find a host where it can replicate because that host is already full of antibodies jaisi virus hai usko it will smother it okay so that is that is how how it it would work yeah uh, next question please <coughs> uh so there was one i think uh, why only corona virus mutating currently not other viruses yeah yeah for example uh, uh, sorry hiv is is an example which is has the same problem it 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 uh, it, it uh, the reverse transcriptase enzyme which is responsible for the replication uh, part of it uh, also doesn't have proof reading activity it, it if it makes a mistake it cannot figure out that there is it has made a mistake normally in in the in the other let's say e coli or human cells if if you have you know i put a wrong nucleotide during replication it will recognize that this is the wrong one it will take it out and put the right one so uh, uh, reverse transcriptase for example does not has that you know function at all if it galat eet lag gayi to galat eet lag gayi theek hai so that is how it is going to so so with regard to uh, it is not true that these are the only corona viruses are there it has come into prominence because of the pandemic influenza does it even more more efficiently than corona viruses it's it's a segmented genome there are eight fragments uh, there so they can recombine and you know they can also also infect for example pigs okay and you 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 gen, uh, not only are you human susceptible but you could also uh, you know uh, have uh, uh, segments coming from other related viruses and you come up with a new 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 virus altogether okay which is so uh, this is a ongoing process this is happening all the time it's whether your body is prepared to deal with it or not is the question we we get common cold almost every year okay because it's a new variant we we i mean if somebody is 30 years old the person may have had 20 you know infections with the influenza virus but har agle saal phir se ho jata because it's a completely new variant okay so it, this is ongoing uh, we, the because we have so much of you know uh, you know everything was shut down and everything you know uh, it was all over the news so we feel that ki corona virus mein jata it, it's true for uh, almost all the viruses actually so yeah there are talks that everything is staged for commercial purpose what is your answer to that the commercial purpose or uh, i think there is a related question is this corona virus an engineered virus or natural one see this this there, there has been controversy around this uh, for a while there is a lot of also discussion and who has been involved uh, my personal take on this is there is enough evidence out there which in, it suggests that this is not a engineered virus per se i mean if you go back to and look at the uh, scientific literature although uh, it, uh, there have been two you know site visits to the wuhan uh, institute of virology by the who team as well they they, they were also not able to come up with something uh, uh, tangible saying that yes this is indeed the case okay so i i i five from based on the literature and you know the if you go back and look at the genome sequences etc etc i i think this is just a natural progression of the disease so that there is no you know uh, purposefully engineered for this uh, i mean accidents can ha happen that is uh, theoretically possible if somebody had the intention of doing this uh, i i i don't believe it with regard to uh, commercialization etc etc uh, I, i see 
the only reason and this is an absolutely brilliant example of a case where immunology has come to the rescue of the world okay if had you not had these vaccines you you i mean the 1918 there were more than 15 i mean the estimates are 50 million to 150 million deaths happened okay even in those days when there was almost zero travel there so many people died okay and the only reason why we are able to, you know, function and, you know, some places have actually now opened up is because of the vaccination. And obviously there is interest in this because there is money to be made. But without the vaccine, you can wipe out nations completely end to end. This has the potential to wipe out human, human race in a sense. So the, the vaccines have been fundamental. I mean, that has been the biggest... Uh, uh, weapon that we have used, mask lagaya or tika, it certainly helps. Uh, I still would advocate, you know, using masks, uh, you know, uh, for at least six more months. Uh, but the vaccines are the ones which have done it for us. And uh, so, obviously, I mean, all of us got a shot. Some of them have to, some of us have to pay for it. Wo apne ek hazar ka ek shot le liya, aur apne pas ek hazar hundred seventy five crore so there's a lot of money there okay but then that can't be helped it, it, it's a small price to pay to you know uh, bring this under control the entire economies of the world have you know got destroyed so i, I think it's 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 a, a glaring example of how immunology can you know help uh, world at large uh, okay yeah any, anything else that I can, I can help with or we would like to go to the omicron versus delta discussion so there are one or two questions more how yep, does please. one can find which vaccine is best how are they acting differently in children and older people uh, uh, great question uh, see again uh, all of these are vaccines which are typically considered equally effective okay some of them may have an edge over one for example pfizer is is something which is uh, uh, being used in the us quite extensively uh, uh, in India, we have not even introduced it. Okay, a variety of reasons, but again, the cold chain is the biggest problem. Uh, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages. For example, uh, if you, if you use the whole virus, you you are, you are going to be not only you know making uh, antibodies against the spike protein, but also against some other uh, other proteins. For example, envelope protein. Uh, so in some cases, it can be a disadvantage because. Uh, it, 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 see the the antibodies which neutralize, which prevent the virus from, you know, binding to the host cell. Uh, those are the ones which are the real effective vaccines uh, antibodies. Okay, they they are neutralizing, preventing the entry of the virus into the host cell. But you can have antibodies uh, directed against other components of the virus, which will help the virus to gain entry i don't whether it, it facilitates the entry and it will get complicated matters okay so you're going to have a, a higher disease than otherwise okay uh, this may not be the case for example in in the mrna based vaccine or where you, you have just a spike protein either as a as a as a, a nucleic acid uh, uh, you know, the, the DNA, for example, the adenovirus is a DNA based uh, virus and you have a mRNA vaccine, which is on the right hand side here. So the, these these would not, uh, you know, the, these would not be less messy on that front. OK, but on the ground, you know, it, it all of them are, you know, in the more or less the same ballpark. OK, um, so that, that that's that's generally the window. Other than that, it is the uh, they, they are they are pretty much effective, uh, and we, we have seen it all. In India, we have mostly been focusing on the inactivated whole virus or the adenovirus versions. Uh, so, so uh, it, you you can already see that numbers of uh, uh, you know infected cases within the country is much lower, and and it, it's uh, uh, attributable to the vaccination program. Yeah, next one, please. How soon will the pandemic be over? And uh, yeah, sir, yeah. Uh, there is one more. Uh, if we start becoming immune to every other disease, won't it change the balance of ecosystem? 
Yeah. So two questions. Uh, in in terms of pandemic, see what's going to happen is that my guess is by the end of the year it will be what is called endemic, meaning we have to live with it. It is going to be all over the place. Uh, the, this this virus will not be able to cause as much disease because your body is better prepared immunologically to deal with it. So when the virus comes, you already have antibodies uh, in 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 your system, and so the virus is not able to you know kind of establish foothold there. Uh, and so therefore, uh, you know, you, you, uh, it's like the common cold. You, we, we uh, I mean, in the US, for example, or even Western European countries, you actually get uh, the shot of the virus. I mean, the influ influenza virus every year. Okay, but still people do get it. So, so this is going to become endemic, meaning so it will be like any other disease. Now, if, uh, with regard to the second question, whether we are going to have lots of, uh, you know, we, uh, the balance will get ma ma messed up. See, remember, this this is, of course, uh, you know, we have been reading about pandemics for a while uh, in, in textbooks. I'm sure, you know, you may have uh, also been introduced in, uh, you know, uh, during either the schooling or this thing, a pandemic type of things. Okay. But here we have lived through it. We have seen how how messy it can be, and it it's no aspect of the human existence that is not affected. I mean, everything has got affected, starting from economy to so you know social relationships to visiting friends to families to I mean teaching and reading and everything is is messed up. So, uh, so so with regard to uh, I mean this is this is a cycle. It, it it's not that it's going to you know our. Overall balance is going to get messed up. I, I I don't think so. I don't I, I don't think so. It's it's uh, the it's it's uh, the pathogens have been there, and the the very fact that we have such a sophisticated system with that can deal with, you know, infinite amount of different pathogens, is already testimony to the fact that. kinds of viruses. So remember, we have just talked about viruses. I, I didn't get much time to talk about the bacterial story, but I just introduced that you might have parallels with the bacteria. But then there are all these fungi to nematodes to others. They are all a, a world in, you know, a world on to itself. So, so balance karab nahi hoga. Nothing to worry on that front. Sir, also, uh, they want to know uh, about some institution where they can apply for different programs. See, I would uh, see there are, of course, lots of great places within the country. If, if somebody is interested in immunology, then we are the only institute in the country which is, you know, which does, you know, we don't do anything other than immunology. We do look at cancers. We do look at, you know, structural biology. We do look, look at other aspects, but all of these kind of are meant to help to understand you know how how the immune system works how you know if there is a disease situation how how we can what uh, to learn about the pathogenesis and how how we can you know modulate or alter these processes so that you know we can have better outcomes okay so uh, we have as i was saying we have uh, training programs in the institute which are for somebody who is at the bsms level uh, which are basically, you know, two months or six month uh, programs. The student actually spends those, uh, uh, depending on the duration, in in our labs doing work, watching, you know, seeing uh, uh, experiments being done, doing it, you know, and these are attending lectures within the institute, which would help, you know, uh, uh, learn what is what is happening in the world, uh, you know, and within lab meetings where cutting edge research is being discussed and also uh, journal club papers published work is discussed threadbare in, in great detail. So it, it kind of also gives you a sense of, you know, uh, how research is done and is it your kind of stuff or something that will be exciting for you. So uh, the, if you go back to the, our NIA website, there, there is a, the protocol, the how the procedures that are required for uh, uh, applying for these uh, these uh, uh, training prog programs is is there so i would encourage all the students to go back and have a look at it and i am sure you know uh, if if you, uh, you 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 should uh, 
as I said, it, it's it, we are catering to the entire country, so you know we have applications coming from all over the place. So it's not that Sare Delhi University se aa jayenge, so, you know there will be a competition there. But they, there are fantastic uh, you know opportunities, and I, I know people, students who have been here for just two months, which which changed their life. You know they they just had a completely uh, it, because it, the the way it, it's not. Experiments the way do we do it in college labs? This is you have one project, you do one experiment, then go to the next experiment. You build on the project, so it's one project, one problem. Okay, so in, and you may have you know some days are going to be you know experiment calm me kia, but which happens in any ways. But uh, other places it, it, it give it gives you a sense of this thing. I mean, you may have looked at kya electron microscope. Hota hai kitab mein photo dekhi thi. Here you went and used it. Okay, you say kya I, I, I we were trying to find out the structure of a pro, of a of a of a, of a biomolecule. You went and you know took uh, uh, X-ray diffraction pattern of this. So that that makes a huge difference. Okay, uh, so you you are seeing it. You also get to do it. You you are saying okay, you uh, know, ne adenovirus me, you know, ne engineer karke bana diya spike protein. You get to do it. Um, okay, in my lab, people are engineering these viruses uh, uh, by themselves. So, so you, you know, you can relate to this, and you will understand that how it works. So, uh, by all means, please uh, have the students are encouraged to have a look at this. There is a pro some of these applications may have to be forwarded by the head of the department, or perhaps the principal. The procedure is given. And please take advantage of this opportunity. And, and, uh, uh, and believe, believe me, when you see this, it, it is always uh, exciting. Reading in books is different. Uh, ha having a look at the machine and seeing this is amplified one, you know, one lakh times the size in front of your eyes is is you know overwhelming. Okay, so uh, please please uh, uh, do take advantage of this opportunity. To come uh, come back, there are also other opportunities. For example, you have various uh, national academies uh, which which sponsor your internship, meaning that you actually get a stipend for uh, doing your internship. Uh, you, you are paid for your stay. You are paid for your uh, you know as as a stipend to cover for all your costs. And it's just that you you obviously uh, ha have to uh, compete for it. But uh, please go back and have a look at the. You know, inspire fellowships, the KY, PY, and you have the national academies. They they actually sponsor your you know stay. So you you are you are covered uh, end to end, and uh, in addition to the great opportunity that you get. So please please uh, uh, you know have a look, and I am sure some of you uh, would would want to shoot for it. So, so what? I yeah. think this would be the last question and sure. students after that, I don't think we'll be able to uh, take any more questions. So this is why our immune system not work against virus. Why the immune system doesn't work against virus? Yeah. 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 Well, this, this may not be uh, uh, true. Uh, uh, you, you see, you, you uh, think about this. Coronavirus has the coronavirus family actually has more than 1000 viruses okay and this sars cov 2 is only one of them okay we are flooded with coronaviruses all the, all over the place okay not all of them are going to be human pathogens okay we do respond to these viruses for sure it's not that uh, now think about this uh, when you're looking at the pathogen versus the host it's 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 war at the molecular level okay the pathogen a virus is trying to con gain control over the host and the host on the other side is trying to you know fend or you know get rid of the infection okay so the, it, so now if if for example you have a virus which which replicates very very fast the immune system the adaptive immune system will take some time couple of days to kick in okay if if you are already vaccinated then it's going to kick in you know in a day or two okay it's going to be extremely rapid Okay, but uh, if it is your body is not prepared, meaning it's it's not immunologically you know primed, then it may take longer. In in that event, the virus or any pathogen, for example, even Streptococcus pneumoniae, for example, will take only two days to fill your your lung completely, and you'll have serious pneumonia, breathing problems, and everything. Okay, so so it, it it's not that the immune system is is they they are fighting it all the time. Okay, 
वन वन मे नॉट रियलाइज इट समाइम लगता है यार आज तो हमारा थोड़ा बॉडी एक हो रहा है द रियल रीजन इज दैट इट 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 you you had a, in a small infection but the immune, before it was able to establish your immune system took care of it okay so it it it's 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 happening all the time and remember in a country like india even just one one visit to the college and back you have touched so many places you have been through metro or buses or you know auto or you know e rickshaw to canteen to you know a whole bunch of stuff so to, you are getting vaccinated every day okay so so we we are, we are always bombarded uh, and that is one of the reasons why we have done little better than the us in terms of you know overall the us still has a couple of thousand deaths because of, of sars cov2 a daily so we are being exposed all the time so it, it, it's not that the virus ke against nahi kar pata this is uh, in, uh, not 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 necessary to you may be for example immunologically compromised because of some reason meaning you you had some other uh, you know condition co morbidities which is making your body ability to deal with any infection not just virus any infection becomes poorer okay you could have a a, a bacterial fungal infection which we you know uh, this, this black fungus thing that was coming or your body is compromised kuch bhi any any pathogen will take over okay so <coughs> that, that that's that's about it so not to worry yeah any any other thing that we would like to discuss or no sir i think all the questions have okay. been answered all right okay uh, thank you so much for being a, a, a great audience and uh, hopefully uh, you have a little better appreciation for how the immune system works as i said i just took a very small aspect of of this uh, and uh, so if, if the students have any questions uh, my email is there on the Website, feel free to uh, this thing, and you, people might want to just come and visit the institute. It 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 may not be a bad idea at all. The, we we uh, they can also have you know so, uh, we have a team from NIA, uh, Jyoti, uh, for example, would be able to you know help out on that as front as well. Okay, uh, so shall we close the session? Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for enlightening us with such an information, uh, such an informative session, and answering the questions raised by the participants. It was really a great experience to listen to you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Babita C. Kola to please address us, ma'am, please. Hello, everyone, and a special welcome to sir once again. Uh, so uh, I would uh, definitely say and. Uh, you know acknowledge this that such a complicated mechanism of immunity uh, was presented in such beautiful and lucid manner by you that uh, i feel indebted to you that uh, you have cleared all our concepts so clearly that i feel not only um, you know the biology uh, participants who are there even the uh, participants who are there from non biology background even they would have understood the pathogen and host interaction so beautifully the slides were absolutely a delight and uh, the talk was definitely uh, so very wonderful that we feel honored to have you here and we shall look forward to more interaction with you and uh, you have definitely answered most of the queries uh, that we had yes uh, visit to the institute was one that i was uh, initially also trying to talk to you about it and you have very uh, elaborately given uh, tips to the students that they are looking forward to now because they are now in third year and they would be looking forward to uh, interaction with uh, scientists and institutes for their uh, you know growth in this particular direction and uh, i would say that this science setu program that began in 2014 we were hugely benefited by this program and uh, the, it was started uh, with uh, the intention of bridging the gap between uh science and students and today i will tell you what i faced today uh, here even by sitting in this uh, lecture the students have so many questions but uh, they feel that is this appropriate to ask this question and your presence here has made it so comfortable for them so convenient for them that what they think has an importance and it is genuine to ask a simple question and it is very important to ask a question so that uh, bridge has been uh, you know 
made between uh, the students, especially undergraduate students who are not exposed to research activities and uh, a very uh, in-depth talks because mostly uh, the talks are uh, you know held at a level where uh, they are not uh, too much driven into the research, but such talks are a delight definitely. So uh, very, uh, I'm very gra grateful to you, sir, for such a wonderful talk and uh, for sparing your valuable time. Uh, I would uh, take this opportunity to invite uh, Dr. Minakshi Munshi, who uh, is here with us uh, from NII. Uh, Dr. Minakshi Munshi, can you please uh, keep your uh, yeah. camera? Yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Let me first introduce a little. Uh, Dr. Minakshi Munshi was a former advisor, scientist G in Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, and she's a full bright fellow. Currently, she is a consultant in NII, and I would definitely want her to address our uh, the gathering here. And my um, special request to you all from NII here is, Please facilitate, uh, you know, the interaction between your institute and our students. That is what we are looking forward to in this, uh, you know, sort of uh, um, uh, relationship. So uh, previously we have had a couple of students who were benefited, who worked in NII labs for three weeks, one month, and uh, they were more than happy to have that experience and a couple of them are in research. So I can say our students are currently in IIT Bombay, in uh, Botany Department, Delhi University, in uh, Jamia Millia, and many other places, to name just a few. And I'm sure we are going to send some students to NIA also soon. So with your cooperation, we are looking forward to that interaction in the future. Over to you, uh, Dr. Minakshi. Thank you, Dr. Babita. It's indeed a pleasure uh, to be a part of now NIA. I, as you said, I had been in the Department of Biotechnology for a long time. And now I am a part of uh, NII. In fact, uh, this Science Setu program has been started, as you said, 2014. Uh, but in between, there was some, uh, you know, dip in this, and now we have again, uh, you know, activated ourselves. And especially this year, being the 75th year of the Amrit Mahatsav, and we are celebrating it. The aim of these uh, uh, seminars and webinars, in fact, they used to be offline seminars is that to connect our uh, researchers with the students because today's students are tomorrow's researchers. So our aim is to connect them and tell them what's happening in the lab and what are the excitements of science as you just heard Dr. Sagal uh, told you about uh, SARS-CoV and how exciting it's to understand the science and then know more and more about the broad spectrum of science research. So this would be very wonderful. As uh, Babita, you said that we should have more of uh, program activities with NIA. Certainly, we would be uh, very happy to have more uh, activities. Probably one can think we could have a pro uh, joint program of cooperation, like you know, we can sign an MOU with your college, uh, like we have with the many other Delhi uh, colleges. That could be one aspect. And the other thing I, as Dr. Saiko also said, your students can apply for these internships. There are like, for example, INSA, INSA, they have to identify a lab where they intend to go and then they have to apply to INSA. They pay your travel, they pay your daily allowances also. So that will give you a wide exposure. Besides this, you write to a large number of people. I'm sure somewhere or other things do uh, work. And the, the most important thing I would suggest all the students is never compromise on the quality of the institute like even if you have to spend six months you know uh, working for it or uh, prepare, preparing for the examinations but do your phd from a very from a good institute because this forms your base and this uh, what you do in your phd how you how you are groomed in your phd is going to decide your career for next 30 years so my uh, humble submission is to all the students is Keep your eyes and ears open, understand, uh, read about the institutions before you even apply there. And definitely these days, uh, you're so lucky that you have internet and everybody's profile and everybody's research activities are on their websites so that you can understand who's working on what aspects and what fascinates you. Then you can accordingly you know, channelize yourself and uh, work hard towards in that direction and see that you make 
make a cut to that lab or to that institute wherever or or else you want to go abroad and study uh, do their research there whatever you want to do you have to figure it out you may uh, but you need to spend some time researching that's also researching like which is the best institute for me uh, looking at my expertise or my passion or my interests so all these things you need to keep in mind uh, Uh, while thinking about this is it no not only this there are many other uh, international fellowships for example this is uh, there is a full bright fellowship where uh, you can do uh, your uh, masters abroad or you can do a phd like if you are registered here you can do part of your phd program in any of the us labs then there are many other fellowships there are dart fellowship is there there are uh indo german fellowship is this dart fellowship then there is a erasmus mundus fellowship there are large number of uh, fellowships maybe one day i can have a talk with you on what are the various fellowships uh, available which you you are eligible to apply and see yourself uh, you can get in one of the fellowships and do your phd from the institute of your interest i, th- I think there are many many opportunities but uh, you need to spend some time on the internet like we spend a lot of time on whatsapp or facebook or instagram but you need to spend some time on these particular websites and dig out the information which is very relevant to you this is what uh, i would suggest if you have any query or qu- questions i will be more than happy to answer or you can write to me or email me whatever mm-hmm. is comfortable to you thank you once again dr babita and the college entire college the principal for uh, inviting nii for the talk which was excellent talk by dr sagal and then sharing my thoughts with you thank you so much pleasure thank you so much we shall look forward to more interaction with all of you and yes of course uh, mou we shall be working on that also uh, as soon as possible uh, over thank to you ma'am thank you so much ma'am for sharing your views with us now i would like to request khushi sharma to please present the vo- formal vote of thanks a very warm and lovely afternoon to our esteemed speaker respected principal ma'am learn teachers dear friends and everyone present here i khushi sharma on behalf of the entire fraternity of zakir hussain delhi college take this opportunity to present the vote of thanks and acknowledge the contributions of those who worked tirelessly in organizing and shaping this event first and foremost i take this opportunity to express my deep sense of gratitude to our speaker dr devendra sagal and jyoti singh ma'am for their sh- sharing their views that has enlightened our minds and has shown us a new path the talk was really inspiring and insightful sir thank you so much for making this program useful and interesting i would like to convey a special thanks to our principal ma'am professor sangeeta sangeeta pandita ma'am for her support and encouragement also we are thankful to professor mohammad aris sir iqc coordinator for his constant support in organizing this event furthermore i would like to express my gratitude to dr pandita si kola ma'am iqc member and nodal officer science setu professor sarita pasi ma'am iqc member and Sh- uh, dr shruti gupta ma'am and other uh, iqc members and faculty for their untiring efforts that has made this program a resounding success i also extend thanks to shota and dg and many other people for their enormous cooperation in the organization of today's event and their willingness to take on the co- completion of tasks beyond their comfort zones last but not the least a big thank you to each one of you for showing your interest and for your valuable presence thank you so much wishing everyone safe and healthy times ahead thank you so much everyone for joining us today